Hello, this is Renaud Angeran from Sophist. Have you heard of an acceptance on zero type of sampling plan for QC inspections? Maybe you've been wondering, how is it different from the typical ANSI Z1.4 plan or Military Standard 105E plan based on the AQA limits that um, most suppliers like to use? And really, what are the implications on the buyer side and on the supplier side? Well, I'm going to walk you through this in this video. Let's first contrast the acceptance on zero plan with the most common type of acceptance plan. Um, in that case, when you set an AQL acceptance quality limit of 2.5%, it actually assumes that this is a con continuous series of batches with the same process and that quality is reasonably, reasonably stable. And when you so when you say 2.5%, it really tries to only catch the big issues, which means that sometimes you would accept the lots with more than 5% of defective units some of the time. I explained that in another video already. You can look at our YouTube channel and look for um, OC curves, uh, operating characteristic curves. So... Really, the question is, can you take that chance, really more than 5% of defect in some of the batches that you're buying, sometimes 6, 7, 8%, if the, and in, if the inspection process itself was not uh, very reliable, then it's even worse. Uh, can you take that chance? It depends on your market. But really what we see in different industries is that people are talking in terms of PPM, parts per million, defective and it's been documented more than once uh, quite a few times actually that some processes go down to 50 ppm of defective goods in a very stable way over years of operation and i'm talking highly automated just like uh, fully manual types of processes okay with uh, lean manufacturing tools and, and 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 so on okay and 50 ppm is 0.005 percent okay so this is actually doable this is state of the art um, and this is a very far cry from accepting a bunch of batches that are five percent or more uh, full of defects okay so um, Moving away from this approach is really um, what prompted some people to develop this type of sampling plan, acceptance on zero. Okay, so again, let's uh, contrast it with the most typical type of sampling plan. In that type of plan, if you have 5,000 pieces, and if you go normal severity, level 2, which is what is most of the time applied, you have to check 200 pieces, okay? And if you set the AQL at 1.5%, meaning that over a series of consecutive batches that are checked this way, um, you don't want more than an average of 1.5%, and you don't really want to take a chance of uh, rejecting it, if it's close to that, so there's even uh, some extra safety for the producer. Okay, uh, the, the 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 acceptance and rejection numbers are seven and eight, meaning that if you find up to seven defects in these two hundred, it is uh, acceptable. If you find eight or more, it is rejected. Okay, now compare seven to 1.5% of 200 pieces, and you will understand uh, it's, it's way higher than three, right? 1.5% times 200 should be three. Um, three and four, acceptance, rejection, no. But this is not the case. So you, you have seven and, and, and eight. To understand that again, you can refer to my earlier video about operating characteristic curves, but really, in a nutshell, um, it follows this um, 
this 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 graph so in principle um 100% of the time it would be accepted if it's somewhere between 0 and the AQL, if it's lower than the AQL, okay? And then as soon as it's the, the percentage of defectives in the batch is higher than the AQL, then it should be 0% probability acceptance should be rejected, okay? So it should follow this, this, and this type of curve. That's if you check 100% of the products. Now, in this traditional sampling plan, the operating characteristic curve uh, looks like uh, the one shown here. And you have, you can see the alpha risk and the beta risk. The, the alpha risk is the risk of having a good batch rejected. So it's the producer's risk. That's what the producer doesn't want. And the beta risk is the risk of having a bad batch pass the inspection. So it's the buyer's risk. The buyer doesn't want that. And in this type of plan, um, beta is 10% and alpha is 5%. So it's more fav favorable to the producer. Again, remember, this is for a consecutive series of batches and we don't want to um, cause extra troubles just by rejecting a batch, uh, except if it's really um, way, way, way over uh the 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 you know the the average that we want uh just because it's based on sampling inspection now this is sort of the limit of this uh traditional plan let's look at an acceptance on zero plan well the big advantage is smaller sampling uh this is one of the the two advantages so if we take the same examples same example we have 5000 pieces normal severity, there's no more level 1, 2, 3, special levels and so on that disappears here. We only have to check 35 pieces, okay, not 200, only 35, wow. And again, if we say the AQL, acceptance quality limit, or the equivalent of it, of, of this is 1.5%, um, it's zero and one okay um so it, it means again uh, 35 pieces and out of these 30, 35 pieces if you find one defective the whole thing is rejected that's the way it works now um, i took the time to explain how this uh works here well this graph uh when you go for acceptance and sampling the idea is different and really it looks more like this. Okay, so the producer's risk is now much higher and then the buyer's risk here is much lower. Okay, you can understand um, that's really the, the, the point here to reverse this uh this this wool logic okay so this is applicable in cases where the buyer has a very high quality standard uh, the buyer cannot afford to have a few bad pieces so they set this very stringent type of uh, type of plan uh, and in some cases it's the manufacturer themselves simply because they can check much fewer pieces okay and this is a good idea if they already have a lot of preventive actions or if they already um, do a lot of inspection during the processes and they don't want to duplicate a lot of that in their outgoing quality control. All right, I hope this video was uh, clear. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me.